Welcome to VM Blogs Mega Series 2021. Today, we have the pleasure of having Orest Lesuk, who is the Solutions Engineer at Starwin. How are you doing today? Hi, quite good. Thank you for the invitation. And today, we're going to be talking about modern data protection solutions. Um, can you tell us a little bit of a background about your company? Yeah, sure. So Starwind has started its way as the storage virtualization pioneer with the software-only product in the form of our software-defined storage solution, which is called Starwind Virtual Sen. Of course, throughout the years, our product portfolio significantly expanded with various free and paid software products, including the Starwind Virtual Tape Library and hardware offerings such as Star and Hyper Convergent Appliance. Now we manage to build the strong company with the strong partner based strategy and worldwide sales, and also manage to take our niche in the modern market with Pronk and the significantly and most recognized products in the SMB and Robo and even enterprise space. So as Brian said, we're here today to talk about data protection and data management. So with that, what are some of the things companies should be looking for in a modern data protection solution? Mm. The first thing when it comes to the modern data protection solution, I would say is the ability to easily test your backups. Now, this is something that might quite frequently be overlooked, just leaving the backups and thinking that if backups are performed, then that's all you need. However, it's actually the restore what you need from the backups, not just making them as such. So this might be a simple full restore of the backups just to make sure the workloads can be running, or at least this can be the checksum mechanism that runs periodically and just make sure that the backup files did not get corrupted or anything else happened to them. The Second thing I would say is the flexibility. Now, it's very important that the modern data protection solution are capable of integrating archival and cold cloud storage tiers into your backup infrastructure without having to use the more expensive hot tiers when it comes to archival. So instead of first sending the data to the hot, uh, and more expensive tiers before actually archiving them, it's really a must for the modern solution to be able to put the data directly to the archival tiers. And the final thing I would say that is really important and what should you be looking into is at least the ability to protect against the ransomware. Even better if the solution can run periodical scans on your backups to make sure you can actually restore in the worst case scenario. Now, you mentioned uh, ransomware. How does a uh, business recover from ransomware and how does having a good data protection platform help in that situation? Well, with the good and decent uh, data protection solution, recovery from the ransomware is not very much different from the disaster recovery. The difference is that your hardware remains intact and functioning. So the important thing when we're talking about the ransom recovery actually is to find where the ransomware came from to make sure that once you restore your backups and continue running the workload, the ransomware will not hit again. So this will involve, of course, the scan of the backups and ideally, this would be the periodical and constant, and constant scan of the backup of the entire backup system to make sure that even if ransomware got there undetected at some point of time, it can still be triggered and it can, well, it can still be traced and you can still take the corresponding measures and restore your backups. The other very important thing is also the preparedness because it's more effective to prepare to the ransomware attack 
instead of just relying that you can simply restore in the worst case scenario. So the staff should be trained, the preparedness plan should be executed and periodically tested. So this is more of the entire strategy plus a decent data protection solution. And what are some of the capabilities that a company should be looking for and require when picking a, a disaster recovery solution? The first thing I would point actually is the ability to flexibly and comprehensively distribute the data between the online media, for example, disks, near line, cloud, and the offline, basically tapes. The solution should provide you the ability to put the data where you want it to be, not where the vendors are forcing you and making the most of the money on you. So in 2021, for example, uh, the data protection solution should not be limited by the plain S3 or blob support where the prices might get around to $24 per terabyte per month without providing the ability to offload the data directly to archival tiers such as AWS Glossier or Deep Archive or Azure Archive tiers where the price will be $1 per terabyte per month. So this would be the most important when it comes to uh, the data distribution. The other thing I would also point out is the ability to ingest the backups in a fast manner. And what I mean is you do not really want to get overload on your primary infrastructure and for example, your websites or databases to lag whenever you're taking another uh, restore point. So the best way to do this would be to have the all flash shared storage and ingest the backup directly from it. For example, the modern Wall Street firms use the all NVMe based storage for keeping their data and the all NVMe backup storage. And this is what we believe will become a mainstream soon because it basically eliminates the common problem of the backup window when you need to schedule your backups, not to overlap with your production environment, keep everything at pace and basically make your production workloads dependent somehow on the backup processes. And, um... You know, you touched a little bit about this, but how does Starwind and your technologies help facilitate customer resiliency? Mm. Well, one of the examples would be to, first of all, easily replicate and restore the workloads in any cloud. So with our solution, uh, the users can restore the workloads with little to no disruption of their actual work, even if the main system that powers their workloads goes down. The second thing is that our solution provides multi-cloud support for our users. So if you are keeping your backups in a single cloud, we strongly recommend also considering the second cloud. So cloud outages are not really a, th a secret and actually can be quite a common thing. So if you're relying on a single cloud, it's always good to have a plan B and Starwind VTL actually makes that plan B to be implemented as easily as it can. So, uh, you know, talking about your product, can you give uh, a few examples of how, you know, you consider it to, uh, to be unique or differentiated in the market what with uh, you know data management and data protection covering such a wide array of things out there just to kind of level set that for people who are watching. Yeah, definitely. And I just want to point out three main differentiators for Starwind VTL. Uh, the first one is that Starwind VTL is the only solution that allows to easily convert the existing LTO-based backups to virtual tapes that can be stored both on the local storage 
and in cloud. The second difference is that we enable our users to put their backups in the storage tier they want. We achieve this by allowing to direct offload to archival tiers such as AWS, Glassier or Deep Archive or Azure Archive tier. Basically, the common problem we solve is for a user not to pay $24 per TB per month, but paying $1 per TB per month by allowing to put their data directly in the archival tiers of the cloud storage. And the third differentiator I want to note is basically the ability to move the data between the clouds or within the clouds in a flexible manner. So Starling VTL allows to move the data without actually having to download all the set and upload it again to the other cloud. So in case there was a need to integrate another cloud storage provider into your disaster recovery and data protection plan, that again is no problem. And Lasse, uh, so maybe you could um, explain some of the use cases uh, that most people that are using your product uh, use and how do you retain your customers with your offerings? Well, one example would be a hospital that requires the data to be kept for up to seven years. What Sion VTL does, it integrates the Azure archive tier to the backup infrastructure and allows them to pay the lowest price for the archival. And moreover, it makes the integration process seamless. So your basic, so your primary backup infrastructure remains intact and you not need to rebuild it in order to integrate our solution. The other example would be a customer that has a strict uh, requirement to keep the backups on the form of LTO. Since Starwind emulates the physical tapes, the LTO, it can be easily integrated, move the backups from the physical tapes to the Starwind virtual tapes, and keep them both on the local storage if required, or also, again, integrate the archival cloud tiers to optimize the pricing. And I don't know if you have anything that you can show us and demo today, but if so, we'd, we'd love to see it. Yeah, definitely. I would love to show you how Starwind VTL actually works. So what we have today is the Starwind virtual tape library installed on the backup server along with the backup software. In our case, this is VM backup and replication. So what Starwind does, it emulates the HP LTO7 or LTO8 tapes and provides them over the iSCSI to the backup software of your choice. As you can see, we have multiple virtual, virtual tape libraries created with different cloud rotation settings. And let's take a look at actually Azure Archive VTL that offloads tapes directly to the Azure Archive tier. All we need to do is basically set the cloud replication, choose our cloud storage provider, Azure in our case, storage account details, and here we go to all the flexible retention settings this town VTL provides. So it allows keeping the tape on the local storage and in the cloud, removing tapes from the local storage once it has been replicated to cloud, and of course, the most important thing, it can skip both hot and cool tiers and write data directly to the archive tier. So let's make one short test. We have everything set up and we have our VM backup and replication installed. And let's actually check one of the file to tape jobs we have already configured and let's make a clone of that to see how it works. Now we're gonna set our clone job. We're gonna keep just the same name. We have just two small files for 57 megabytes to make things work fast. Correspondingly, we select our Azure Archive direct media pool 
as you can see, we have the corresponding media pools for every virtual tape library. That's for the incremental settings and for the full backups. Now we have two options here, eject tape media and export current media set, which basically allows Starwind to grab the tape once the backup job has been completed and further be responsible for keeping it locally or in the cloud storage. Now let's actually run our backup job. Now, once the backup job is complete, Starwind VTL will grab the tape and offload it to the cloud. As you can see, we already have quite a few virtual tapes offloaded to the cloud storage. There are no local copies as per our retention settings, but this can always be flexible. We can always keep the data first on the local storage, move it to cloud and keep both copies, or we can remove it from the local storage just after it has been uploaded to cloud, or of course, to keep it for the certain amount of days. Now the backup job is pretty much completed and we see our new virtual tape currently on the local storage uploading. And once the uploading is complete, it will be removed from the local storage and kept only in the cloud tier. Now, just to check that our tape indeed has been put to the Azure archive, let me open our demo container and let's search for our tape by the barcode. And there we go. So as you can see, we have our tape data successfully uploaded and directly in the archive tier without having to wait for it to first go to the hot tier, then for example, to cool, and only then get to the archive tier, paying correspondingly all the prices for the destaging. So this becomes the optimal solution when it comes to implementing archival and even DR scenarios within your current infrastructure. Well, thanks for that great demo, Arrest. Um, can you maybe tell us where people can go if they want to find out more information about Starwinds and some of the tech technologies you talked about today? Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we have quite a useful knowledge base and the Starwind blog site where the industry experts and leaders share their experience on the data protection mechanism and the modern story solutions. So that would be the place to go as well as the actual VM blog. Well, thanks for uh, having us today and uh, look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you again for the invitation. Also looking forward to our future meetings and wish everyone to stay safe and keep the backups away from the ransomware. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from our cloud technology partners, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get notified next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Very important.